How's it going everyone? This is Wenbo. Today we're going to have another Blender tutorial. We're going to talk about color management. I got a quite a bit DMs from Instagram. People asked me to test the AGX color profile and asked me is that worse to switch from Filmic to go to the AGX? The quick answer is yes, go ahead, switch it. No problem with it. If you want to know why I made this decision, and just keep on watching the rest of the videos. I'm going to walk you through the comparison process and also introduce some terminologies from photography, help you to understand an image from a photographer perspective. So without further ado, let's get started. Before we dive into Blender to quickly just switch on and check and compare the color differences between the color format, I really want to introduce some terminology to you guys from a photographer perspective and that is the dynamic range. To fully understanding the color profile, this is the term that very often used when we capture images using camera. As you can see here, we have a gradient, and this is no color, this is only have the tones, so from black to white, from absolutely zero black to all the way pure white. So this is the two end of all the shades, what we can possibly see, and often in photography, we call it the tone or tonality. So basically is the different shade of gray and eventually to hit the white into the black, okay? The dynamic range is talking about this range, okay? From all the way black to all the way white. The golden rule for your image or for your camera, it is the higher dynamic range it has, the lower contrast the image is going to produce and also having a smoother tonality. I know this sentence, this golden rule doesn't make any sense to you at this moment, but we will explain this in the next couple of slides, okay? For human eyes, we can actually separating from the all the way black to all the way white into 24 stops, okay? This is how much our human eyes can detect or distinguish how many steps we can go from here. So basically just break it down into 24 stops, okay? For a typical digital camera or full frame camera, you can actually have 12 to 14 stops. So you can definitely see that that significantly smaller or less stops compared to human eyes. That's why if you are into photography and you grab a camera, when you see something very beautiful and you're trying to capture that, however, the picture doesn't reflect exactly tonalities and the beautiful transitions for the sky or anything, it just doesn't match from what you see. This is because the dynamic range of a camera is very limited. It almost cut in half compared to our human eyes. We can see much smoother transitioning from tones from each color. So this is significant. So for medium format cameras, you usually range about 14 to 15 stops. You see a little bit higher but right now there's some really good full frame cameras from Sony that can even actually reach 15 stops just being a full frame. This is something I wanted to let you guys know why professional photographers are going to purchase the medium format camera because they want a huge dynamic range compared to full frame or mirrorless camera. So this is the one reason their images looks very beautiful and smooth. Here is a quick chart I found from the internet. I'm basically trying to let people to know the human eyes can detect more dynamic range where having more stops compared to the, the cameras we have. However, this is not representing the right way. It doesn't mean the camera's only capturing the parts of the dynamic range. This is not how it works. It is absolutely wrong. The correct way is like this. The camera is still going to having the darkest part of the image and also have the widest part of the image. And it just has less stops. So which means the shade of gray from all the way black to all the way white is only have 14 stops or 14 steps. And it does not works like human eyes from all the way black to all the way white have 24 stops or steps. I know you had to make tweak around a little bit, but this is how you understanding when people are talking about, oh, this image looks very smooth. The color looks beautiful and very smooth because it's the gradients, it's very smooth. The tonality of a shade of gray can really slowly graduate to build up or build down. It's just basically saying that each shade of gray have really small increment, which means 
when you're having a series of grain or a transitioning, it's going to look very smooth and beautiful. It's pleasing to the eye and also it's having a soft feeling. That's why a lot of photographers are saying, oh, this image looks very smooth. Are you shooting this with a media format or are you using a gradient light to achieve that? So this is why, okay? If we go back to Blender, when you set up color management, we have a couple options drop down the menu. The standard is the one we have the lowest dynamic range for Blender renders, especially in cycles. And the Filmic is a little bit better one because it had a little bit broader dynamic range. And right now, the latest version of the is being tested is AGX, which is had even higher dynamic range compared to Filmic, which means it basically have much better tonality or broader tonality for image creator. We are going to have much more rooms for post-processing to doing really beautiful adjustments on a specific areas to getting color, to getting the render images to be the best it can possibly be. Remember this rule is the higher the dynamic is, the lower contrast is going to be on the image and also have the smoother tonality. After we talk about all these concepts and these rules, then once we go back to Blender to look at a color again, you will know much better. Now we're inside Blender. I'm using the two version of blenders in order to having this color format. I'm not going to go over how I installed AGX color format in Blender. There are video tutorials talking about this specifically. I'm gonna leave the link in the description. You can definitely check it out. I want to quickly compare what the Filmic and the AGX. As you can see here, for the look, I didn't put anything on these two images. They are exactly the same. Blender files, the only difference is it's just the color profile. I know directly from this really rough renders, you wouldn't see too much details. However, just looking at this, from this view, you can definitely see the AGX has less contrast built in this profile. And you may think, well, this doesn't look very pleasing, Wimbo, and why we need to do this? Remember, we have this wider dynamic range is best to use for post-processing. We can simply just adding a curve adjustment layer to bump up the contrast, and we can reserve a lot of details, which means in the highlight part is not going to blow out, and we have more details in the shadow area as well. If we go here to standard, you will see this part is definitely blown out, and it doesn't look very pleasing, and the, the gradients on this neck bottle, it doesn't feel that good, that smooth. You see the AGX, we have a lot of information around this areas. We can definitely do some a lighting adjustment back in the Photoshop and in order to pull in the best quality of the entire render. So that's the whole purpose to having this. Of course, if you're really going to stick with the Filmic, making sure you change the look to the very high contrast, it actually bump up really good quality for this type of render using the Filmic. This is my default setting before I switch to AGX. If you like that look, and just stick with it. And for right now, for the AGX, in the look areas, you don't have a whole lot of options for the AGX, but I will highly recommend you just go with the punchy. So as you can see here, it definitely adding some really good contrast back in here. You can get a thing this rendered out, and you can definitely do some post-processing works in the Photoshop. And just quickly compare these, I still feel like this part is a little bit too bright and you don't see there's nice, beautiful transitioning around this areas. But you can see here, we have a lot of information in here, right? And, and also in the shadow areas, this looks very dark and this one has more details. Okay, so that is the reason why I decided to switch AGX. If we are go back to Photoshop, now we can take a look at it to see the final render images using different color profile. On the left is the Filmic with high contrast. This, this part is the AGX with the punchy. If you're really not professional, you might think, well, the color looks a little bit different, right? This one looks more saturated, this one doesn't. Well, the main reason is because the contrast, this thing is a little bit off. So the AGX give you us more range of tonalities. You can see here, for this tiny dial, it actually have a wrong shape. In this AGX, you can definitely see 
we have something over here. If we go here, adding a quick adjustment layer, like just adding a curve adjustment layer to adding a little bit of contrast, once you're adding here, it looks very close. And actually, I even like this look because it has a little bit more shapes or tonalities from highlight to shadow. I know it's very, very minor, but for me, I think it's worse to do the switch, okay? So here's more example in here. And immediately you will see the transitioning from the highlight to the dark part is not that smooth compared to the AGX. It's definitely very smooth. I know it's lack of contrast, so that's why I can quickly add in a, another curve adjustment layer like this and just add it on. Immediately you have some really beautiful transitioning from the highlight to the shadow areas and without losing any details in the brightest part of this image. So this is something I really like. I love the smoothness of this image render. It just looks much, much better compared to the filmmaking with high contrast. It feels very photorealistic and high quality to having this beautiful uh, tonality in this image, okay? In conclusion, go ahead and switch to the AGX color profile. I hope some days this color profile is going to become a default color profile in the Blender. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit likes and share and leave comments. Tell me what do you think about AGX. Again, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.